Hello and welcome back to Let's Code Physics. Uh, I am excited today to be starting a new series with you uh, in the field of electromagnetism. Um, this is a field we haven't really broached on this channel yet. Um, we've been focusing mostly on uh, mechanics stuff, classical mechanics, this teeny tiny bit of quantum mechanics because those things make for interesting animations uh, and I've been trying to do more animated stuff. Um, but for electromagnetism, it creates these beautiful, amazing graphs. And so I would love to share my love of graphs with you. Graphs are some of the most beautiful things in nature. Um, what we're going to be working on in this series is an integration program that calculates an electric potential. Here's the, the general picture of how this works. Um, as you imagine that you've got some sort of charged object. I did not do a very good job drawing a rectangle, um, but that's fine because it doesn't have to be a rectangle. We'll do all sorts of shapes. Um, in fact, this is this video will be starting in mid-November, um, so we can wrap up the series in December um, with some holiday shapes. That would be fun. But basically what you do is uh, you take your charged object uh, and uh, you think about the charges that are on it. Um, so I always draw plus charges even though negatives are easier to draw. So you've got this thing, it's got an excess of electrons or a deficit of electrons, so it's got some charges to it. And you want to know what the electric potential is over here at this location, right? And so what you have to do is you have to integrate over this um, over this region here. The way it works is this V, uh, there is a constant out in front. We're not going to worry about that constant because we're going to pick units where that constant is equal to one. Um, I, I'm just, as a physicist, I am ethically obligated to remind you that there's a constant there. Um, you have to take this integral uh, and what an integral is, is an integral is adding up a bunch of tiny bits. You probably, if you've taken a calculus class, heard that the integral is an area under a curve. That is one application of an integral because there you are adding up tiny bits. You're adding up tiny bits of area. Here what you're doing is you're adding up tiny bits of charge. Um, and let's, to make life easy on ourselves and able to graph, we're going to say that this is a surface charge. Um, and so this surface charge has a density uh, that we call sigma, that is the amount of charge per unit area. And so what you do is you have this sigma times a little bit of area. So this dA is a tiny little bit of area right here. Um, and so, so that little bit of, of area has a little bit of charge that is sigma times dA. So you're taking charge per area times area that gives you a charge. And then you have to divide it by a distance. You've got to divide it by the distance. And now I'm starting to get crowded here, so let's go with a little bit different coloring. That is the distance from the little bit of charge that you're considering to the point where you're considering it. Pretend I know how to draw a, 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 an arrow from one point to another. This is supposed to go to this black point right here. So that distance is this cursive R, or script R, as we affectionately call it in an e &M course. Um, and the, the, the reason you need that is because the potential gets weaker and weaker the farther away you get from the, uh, the farther away you get from the point. Um, and so you're integrating over this thing, uh, and so you're adding up each little bit. So you do the integral for this piece right here, or not the integral, you do the contribution from this piece right here, you do the contribution from this piece right here, the contribution from this piece right here, etc. And so the, the the sigma here, this can vary with the shape. So you could have maybe all your charges around the edge, like in a conductor. You could have them uniformly distributed, like, uh, like, a, like a charged insulator. Um, the word charged insulator has always bothered me because charges don't move in an insulator, but that's 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 a pedantic rant for another time. I'll save that for a physics uncut video. How about that? Um, <clears throat> or maybe you've got some sort of hybrid material, a semiconductor or something, where maybe they're all along one edge and not around the other edges. So we'll play around with that. So this basically this thing can be a function of the oops, let me go back to black. 
there we go, back in black now. Uh, so this thing can be a function of the coordinates for this thing. Now we've got to start thinking about coordinates because we have coordinates that we're integrating over. So we've got an X and a Y for the surface here and we've got the location of this thing. And those two are different coordinates, right? Those are different um, degrees of freedom. So we wanna be able to integrate over this thing, but keep this thing fixed. So the convention is to call this point here, x prime, y prime. So the sigma is a function of x prime and y prime, while the point that we're measuring at is this x and y. And so we give these things different names. We call this point over here the source point because that is where the uh, electric behavior is coming from. That is where the electric potential is coming from. If you didn't have this, you wouldn't have an electric potential out here, or you'd have an electric potential of zero, I guess. Um, you, you, so this is the source of the electromagnetic behavior. Um, whereas this thing here, this is where you are measuring the potential. Uh, and ultimately the reason you want to measure a potential is to calculate an electric field. Uh, so we call that the field point. So this is the field point. This one over here is the source point. So the source point is where it comes from. The field point is where it goes to. And so in order to calculate this script R down here, uh, you just do a, a little bit of Pythagorean theorem. So it's gonna be square root of the X component squared plus the Y component squared. The X component squared is gonna be X minus X prime squared plus Y minus Y prime squared. And of course you're free to flip x and x prime and y and y prime as you like um, because in, in this order because you're squaring it but so we'll just put x minus x prime squared oh and so we're integrating over the prime coordinate so that's going to have to be a da prime here so our da prime if we're using cartesian coordinates is going to be dx prime dy prime so a little bit of area has a little bit of x and a little bit of y um, we might switch over to polar coordinates at one point, but it's just as easy to use X and Y and change your um, change up your integration bounds. And so what we have to do in, in order to implement a, an integral in a code, in a computational code, um, is, is, is to take little pieces. So we're going to uh, establish a step size in each direction. So we're going to have a little bit of dx and a little bit of dy. And we're basically going to increment over this thing so that we increment over the entire shape. So uh, we're going to do this in Scilab. I haven't worked in Scilab in a little while, so it'll be good to get back. Um, let's run a clear command first because that's always helpful. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a function for my charge density here because I want to be able to change that uh, without having to worry ab uh, about it, uh, without having to worry about anything else. Um, let's do a little uh, uh, split window there. There we go. Um, so let's see. Let's call this thing um, S for sigma. Uh, let's call this thing the charge density. Charge density. Cool. And that's a function of x prime and y prime. Cool, so when I define this function, uh, I'm gonna have to say charge density of one argument comma another argument. And let's make it incredibly easy right now. Let's just make it a nice uniform value. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so the next thing I need is uh, in order to make this integration routine easier, I'm gonna need to define the function to be integrated. So the function to be integrated is the integrand. So that's the sigma over script r. Um, so I suppose, let's, let's define a function for script r just in case we, um, we wanna change that later. Function uh, r equals script r. Or script r is fine, I don't need to camel case that. And that'll be a function of x and x prime and y uh, actually, no, let's do it as x and y and x prime and y prime. So we've got field point and source point. I'll have to reference that later to remind myself of, of the order. Um, so r is going to equal the square root of, we've just got um, x minus x prime 
squared plus y minus y prime squared. Cool, so there we go, I've got my script R function. So now I'm ready for the integrand. Um, so let's call that f equals, uh, I guess we'll just call it integrand. Integrand of, let's see, that's gonna have to be a function of all of those, x, y, x prime, y primed. And so my integrand is going to be charge density. I've been spoiled by the autocomplete in C sharp. Um, that's a function of x prime and y prime divided by script R and that's x, y, x prime, y prime. Cool, I've already got the square rooting taken care of and everything else, awesome. So I've got all my pieces taken care of. I'm not sure why I got that thing there. Uh, there we go, now I'm back to normal. Okay, um, so now that I've got all that taken care of, I can actually start to build the integral. So an integral needs bounds, so I'm going to need uh, an x min bound and a, uh, a y min bound, and, and an x max, excuse me, x min, x max, a y min, and a y max. This is basically the size of the um, of the thing that we're integrating. We'll make it a rectangular um, bounds for charged rectangle. So we're going to pretend I can draw a rectangle over here. Um, and I suppose technically I should call those xp and yp just so I keep those straight for later when I am looping over the other piece. Um, Let's see, let's, let's make this one nice and easy. Let's make it a square um, that goes uh, from negative one to one uh, in each direction. There we go. So we've got a square of side length two. Awesome. Uh, so now what I need to do is I need to set up this integral. So this is a double integral. And so since it's a double integral, I need to have two loops. I need to have a loop over x prime and I need to have a loop over y prime. So I need to say for uh, x prime equal to x min in steps of dx prime uh, by, until x max. Yeah, so this is saying for uh, x prime starting at x min but in steps of dx prime all the way to x max, and so I need to define my x prime. Um, calculate step size. What I find is easier to do than calculating the step size is to set the number of points that I want. Um, let's call it number of integration points. Um, so call that, you know, 100 or some large number, and then I can calculate my step size uh, in terms of the number of points. So I can take xp max minus xp min, divide by 1.0 times n int points. I'm always paranoid about, um, uh, about integer division, uh, truncating things. Uh, and then I can do the same thing for dy prime replace all the X's with Y's. And so this way, um, this way, no matter what I, no matter what my X min and X max are, I have the same number of points because that's usually more important than the, than the step size itself. Um, so what I do is I loop over those and then I need to loop over my Y prime. So for Y prime equal to Y min by DY prime Y max. Uh, I need an end there. There we go. Scilab is sometimes kind enough to give you a, a, an automatic end. Sometimes it's not. So what we're doing here is this is the double integral. This is saying I want you to loop over values of x prime and I want you to loop over values of y prime. So that way we're getting every possible chunk inside our charged um, inside our charged object. Uh, what I need to do next is to have the is calculate the actual integral. So let's call that potential uh, plus equals, oh wait, Scilab doesn't know plus equals, excuse me. Potential equals potential plus, and then I need to do the integral. So the way I do the integral is I take the integrand of 
Uh, all right, now I got to remember what it is. It is x y y prime y y x prime y prime. So let's copy that, paste it over here. Uh, we can expand this guy out a little bit. Uh, Okay, um, so we have potential equals that. So basically you're adding up one piece at a time. So I'm taking the contribution from this piece, then I add to it the contribution from this piece, then I add the contribution from this piece, etc. So I have to initialize that to zero. And so what I've got down here is potential equals potential plus integrand, and then I need to multiply by the DA primed. Right, so, uh, so so in order to make this a differential piece, I have to multiply by dA primed, and dA primed is equal to dx prime dy prime, so I multiply by my step size in each direction, times dx prime, times dy prime. Now I have not given it an x and a y, um, so let's initialize those over here, x equal to, uh, let's see here, we're going from this thing is going, I want the point to be outside of the charge surface so that I avoid a division by zero in here. Um, so let's have this be at the point two, two. So the thing is, uh, go, so this square uh, is two wide by two wide and then I'm one off to the X and one up from the Y. And then I can print my or not print, it's a display. Uh, I can print my potential value. Cool. Uh, let's run this and see what mistakes I made. Oh, uh, undefined variable x min. Oh, whoops, right, right, right. I changed those to primes earlier. Prime, 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 prime. I just, I, I feel like these primes are more optimal, you know. Okay, cool. So we have run through the calculation. Um, if we were to put in a display statement for the potential here, and then decrease the step size so I don't get 10,000 10, uh, data point, display points, what you see is that it increases every time, right? Because my charge is all positive, it's all uh, contributing to it. And so as I go over the... Um, over the charge square, I'm getting more and more potential added. We can make that a little more interesting if we make this thing non-uniform. So for example, let's suppose this thing went linearly with x prime. So on the left hand side, it's going to be a negative value. And on the right hand side, it's going to be a positive value. Let's see what the difference comes out to be there. Okay, so when it first starts integrating, it's on the left-hand side, and so it's got these negative values. Um, the negative values keep getting added to, right, because we're getting more and more negative, uh, but then eventually, eventually, okay, but eventually, right around here, I should have this be displaying the uh, X prime and Y prime as well. Uh, so let's have this display. Um, it's a first in, last out command. So we'll display X prime, Y prime, comma X prime. Um, oh, I wanted you to put them on the same line. Okay, well, I need to actually learn how to use the display command at some point. Um, Oh boy, that does make this thing long, doesn't it? Okay, here we are. So at negative one, so it starts out at negative one, negative one. Uh, you notice it's moving in the y direction um, because that's our inner loop is y, and so it's adding more and more negative values, which is making the thing a a more negative result, meaning farther in the negative direction. Let's skip down this way. It's getting more negative, getting more negative um, until. Let's see, it gets all the way to 0 0.3, 0 0.36. Yeah, so the thing becomes more negative. Um, I'm looking for where it turns around. Okay, so what you notice is that at this point, my x value is equal to zero. So I've, I've, I've reached the middle of the square here. And so what I end up with is no contribution to the potential because uh, because we're adding an x prime of zero to it, so I get no contribution to the potential. Then we cross the uh, the y-axis. We start getting 
um, positive x prime values and now our potential is becoming more positive. And so you see now it's taking away this 0.2 instead of adding a negative 0.2, it's, it's adding a 0.2, so it's, it's getting closer to zero. And every time we go along, we are adding another positive number, so now it's getting more positive. So the stuff on the left is giving me a negative potential, stuff on the right is giving me a positive potential. This is symmetric, so it should give me zero by the end. I should be able to completely cancel the thing out. Um, we are definitely getting closer to zero, getting closer to zero. Oh, and now we've started to add positive contributions. This should have canceled by now, but notice I'm at the last, um, I'm at the last column of it at positive one. So I do end up with a little bit of a positive there. So let's do this. So whenever you, whenever you don't get a result that, um, that looks like it should make, that, that doesn't look like it makes sense. Um, the best thing to do is to increase your number of data points. So we're going from 10 uh, points along each axis. Oh, and this is the points along each axis. So total points is equal to n int points squared. Uh, that came up in my computational research methods class. I asked the students for uh, a thousand for 2,000 data points and they put 2,000 by 2,000 and it took their code like a week to run. Um, so let's save and execute. Okay, we, I'm still getting a, a small amount there. Um, so that tells me that I've got too much contributing on the uh, on the right. Oh, oh, that actually, that makes sense because this is a uh, this is a a left hand sum or a right hand sum? Um, yeah, if I were to do a more advanced integration rule, like the trapezoidal rule or something, I would end up with a better result, I think. But basically, every time you increase this by a factor of 10, you're increasing your number of, um, you're increasing your total number of data points by a factor of, a, of 100, and so it takes it 100 times longer to run. Um, so 1,000 is probably too many points there. Okay, it did go down a little bit, so it's getting a little bit better with that. Um, uh, so I might need to uh, look up um, the midpoint rule or the trapezoidal rule um, and use that one instead. Okay, so I looked up how to implement the trapezoidal rule in um, two dimensions. Um, so we have to do a trapezoidal rule correction along each edge, and then we have to do an additional one in each corner. So I'm checking for whether um, we are located at one of the edges and whether we're located at one of the corners. So the edges get a half subtracted off of their contribution, and the um, corners get three quarters uh, subtracted off, so a half and, three, and a quarter makes three quarters. Um, I also have it uh, displaying at a corner to tell me it's at a corner. That should appear four times. Um, I was rather disturbed though to see that I still do not get zero like I expected. And then I realized I'm not supposed to get zero because this is not symmetric. Because my point is, the point, the, the field point is off to the corner here on the right, it is closer to the positive side than it is to the negative side. So although this charge density is symmetric um, across uh, the y-axis, this script R is not. I forgot about faithful script R down there. And so this should be a positive because it's closer to the positive charge than it is to the negative charge. Uh, we can verify that by moving to the left side of the um, <clears throat> excuse me, by moving to the left side of the uh, of the, the charge square. And lo and behold, we get the same thing, but a negative because we're closer to the negative side. So this is exactly what we would expect physically. What I was thinking of applies to if we're at x equals zero, so we're somewhere along the y-axis, then we are equally close to each uh, uh, positively charged point and each negatively charged point. Um, and so those cancel out and give you zero. So anything times 10 to the minus 16 is just the computer's 
uh, garbage left over, so this is basically zero. Okay, so all is right with the world. Uh, we can proceed. Um, I, I probably didn't need to have the trapezoidal rule corrections, but it's nice to have them, um, so that'll be good. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.